welcome to a new episode of Insta Talk, the show that covers all the latest stories on social media by your favorite influencers, bloggers, and lifestyle experts. I'm your host, Dina, and today we're discussing Cuties, the controversial Netflix film that some say crosses the line between depiction and exploitation. We'll be taking a look into how to prepare your skin and wardrobe for the fall, trendy autumn makeup, and if and how food can combat Netflix's controversial film Cuties faced backlash even before its release. A promotional poster for the film, depicting children in provocative clothing and positions, with a TV rating of mature, led to the cancelling of subscriptions, online petitions and the involvement of US lawmakers. The film centers around an 11-year-old Muslim girl who rejects her family's encouragement to be modest and obedient by joining an outspoken girl dance group to gain popularity on social media. Critics are slamming the hypersexualization of the children, saying the film uses inappropriate shots and provocative clothing and dancing. The film's director has said the work grew out a desire to explore what it means to approach womanhood between two cultures, as well as the wider theme of the hypersexualization of youngsters in modern society. Cuties can be seen as a cautionary tale about children and social media, but has it crossed the line between depiction and exploitation? is author and journalist Yvonne Ridley. Hello Yvonne, how are you? Hi, uh, very well, thank you. Lovely to see you again on InstaTalk. Now, defenders of the film suggest that the film was made to make the audience uncomfortable, um, that it's a, a look into how kids are sexualized in modern society. But will there ever be enough context to justify this film and should have this film be made anyway? You know, I've, I've got a very open mind. I haven't seen the film. I've seen the trailers. Um, it seems to be a boundary breaking film by a female director that is designed to make us confront the issue of uh, children and uh, the whole issue of um, sexuality and how old should they be when they um, start wearing lipstick or fashion or, yeah. you know, we can't keep our children in aspic forever. And if the movie makes people feel uncomfortable, well, surely that's good. The fact mm -hmm. that we're talking about it now, just based on a trailer, mm -hmm. shows that, um, you know, this uh, the film is working already. Right, okay. I mean, the child actors in the film were 13 at the time of filming though. Um, do you think that that film has actually exploited these kids uh, and it's interfering, let's say, especially with the main um, sort of um, actress that's in the film, it's actually interfering with Islamic beliefs and culture by encouraging Muslim girl, for example, to be disobedient? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's not just about Islam, although Islam does feature, but uh, I think there's no problem with 13-year-old actors, you know, they're supervised by um, adults on set, uh, their parents are aware if their parents didn't want them to take part mm. or felt comfortable about the content of the script. Uh, then they wouldn't have allowed their children to take part. You know, child actors, and I've seen child actors on film sets, um, are very protected and looked after. Mm. So um, the children, um, the actors were 13. The actual uh, characters that they played were 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so they were sort of playing for a younger age, but um, mm. the film though was marketed for an adult audience which has led to Netflix being accused of paedophilia. Now the film is still on Netflix, should it be removed though? Absolutely not, mm. you know if you don't want to watch it, switch off. Right. Um, this is that, a yeah. very hot topic and mm. uh, you know you could argue that um, parents who uh, force their children to wear the hijab 
um, mm. at the ages of seven, eight, nine upwards, you could argue that they're sexualizing their children. Mm. Um, so just by the notion of putting on a hijab, mm. I think the fact that the film is stimulating debate is a good sign. Um, I'm sure that that's what the female director uh, was after. And uh, as I say, she, she's achieved that already. More than two million people have already seen the trailer. Mm. Uh, this film is going to be a box office hit. Mm. Uh, whether it's just for people to watch it and then say it's outrageous and I never mm. want to see it again, yes. or whether it's people who are curious, or whether it's just a really good film. Now, what do you think in terms of the fact that Although now we are arguing about the film um, being um, sort of or trying to exploit, um, you know, girls of that age, does it not actually be the same um, situation or compare with social media, for example, with how a lot of these teenagers, whether they're boys or girls, um, have actually got TikTok, have got Instagram and so on. And a lot of them are actually exposing, you know, their bodies and so on. So can you see any relation between the two, do you think? Well, you just have to, um, as you say, look at the social networks. You just walk into a department store and look mm -hmm. at the fashions there that are available for children um, much younger than the 11-year-olds that are being uh, characterized in this film. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, these are issues that parents should really address. You know, is it appropriate? to put their eight-year-old daughter in a crop top? Mm. Um, is it appropriate for a 10-year-old to put on lipstick? At what age should uh, eyeliner be allowed? You know, these are all discussions. Each child is different. Each parent is different. Uh, different attitudes, cultures, religions also come into play. It's a great talking point. I'm glad that a female director um, has actually gone in to tackle this tough subject head mm. on. Mm. And I think, you know, there are lots of tough subjects out there and we shouldn't shy away from them. Right. And okay. if nothing mm. else, she has created a conversation. She has indeed, definitely. And, and I was going to ask you just one other thing. I mean, the director herself did say that the work grew out to desire, a desire to explore what it means to approach womanhood between two cultures. So um, I'm, I'm assuming that's the two cultures between the um, you know, Western culture and the Islamic culture. Um, do you think the, there is a difference between the two cultures um, during this modern, in, in modern society at the moment, although we do have a lot of like what we call um, bloggers, media influencers, you know, quite a lot of famous, um, you know, sort of, uh, let's just say, personalities that are really famous in social media that are already making a big, you know, sort of hit um, in social media. So do you think there is a big uh, difference in the two cultures and, and whether this, this difference is actually widened or is it actually narrowed now? I think um, it's not so much culture, but attitude mm. and mindset of parents. And, you know, you can get uh, very narrow minded uh, thinking parents in all sorts of uh, backgrounds uh, right across the world, all points of the compass. I don't think it's just um, Islam versus the Western culture. And when you look at uh, some of the top models, for instance, I'm thinking um, the Hadid sisters. I mean, they are fantastic ambassadors, yes. in my view, yes. um, for Muslim women. I think they're terrific ambassadors. However, there will be other people who will be saying, well, what they wear is haram, their behavior is this. And, you know, we're living at the moment in a very judgmental society. Mm. And people who rush to point the finger and, and uh, give their opinions. What I would say is we need to stand back and assess more what we're doing uh, to our children. Um, is it harmful? Is it, uh, are our attitudes constricting them? You know, the, uh, we should stop 
and think before we rush to judge. That's right. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's a very good um, advice there. Um, thank you so much, uh, Yvonne Ridley, our lovely author and journalist for joining us um, tonight on Insta Talk. And uh, yeah, maybe I will actually watch the QTs myself and then make that um, sort of uh, decision myself, actually, <laughs> make up my mind well, about it. So, uh, and then, I think you just get up and walk out. Um, <laughs> that's right. It, it's, that's right. Uh, I've, I don't think the film is about entertaining. I think it's about informing and educating. Yes. And, uh, you know, maybe it's, it, it, if it does make parents think twice about buying a mini skirt for an eight-year-old or a crop top uh, for a child, maybe it'll make them think twice. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much once again, Yvonne. And hopefully we'll see you in our future episodes. You have a lovely evening now. You too. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. The days are getting shorter. Temperatures are dropping and the air is becoming drier. Autumn has officially arrived. But while chunky knit jumpers and pumpkin spice everything might be on the horizon, the cooler temperatures don't necessarily mean good news for your skin. Autumn is a time of transition and the best time to rejuvenate and repair your skin after the summer sun. If acne, redness or dry patches is an autumn challenge for you, we've got you covered. We all want to keep our skin hydrated during the colder months, but the fall can present a set of new challenges. So how do we achieve the perfect dewy glow? to welcome to InstaTalk, Sarah Edward Knight. She's the hair and makeup artist and very well known for her page, the Back to Nature Girl, which obviously will, she'll tell us more about. Why is it called Back to Nature Girl? We'll find out about it in a minute. Hello, Sarah, and welcome to InstaTalk. Hi, Dina, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. So lovely to see you here on our show. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, <laughs> no worries. Fantastic. Right. Let's get, let's get um, started. I mean, I, I want to ask you this question, right? I want my skin to glow this autumn. Okay. So what makeup can I use that's good for my skin and will give me that dewy glow? Okay. So first of all, I think what's really important to establish with, with skin that's looking good and feeling good is that it actually starts way before the makeup. So I'm a makeup artist. I've been doing makeup for 20 years. You know, that's my background. And um, I, there's all sorts of brands that I love. I'm a vegan makeup artist. So all the brands that I use are vegan and cruelty free. It's something that I'm really, really passionate about. But let's just strip it all the way back because right. to get good makeup, you really need to think about your skincare, but also you need to think about your diet, what you're mm -hmm. putting into your body. And I really believe in that whole healthy inside out approach and what goes on in the gut and how that affects the rest of our skin really. So um, I think it's really, really good to think about what you eat and how that may impact upon your body that kind of mind body skin kind of connection and yeah before makeup you really need to think about skincare so what skincare are you doing what regime are you using are you just stripping your face back by using a wipe for example um or are you using a good skincare um regime for example this one here um from arbon which is a vegan brand that's been out for about 40 years it's called age well and they've just launched a brand um a brand new range which uses a plant-based alternative to retinol now i know a lot of people love using retinol because it's an active ingredient and it helps with skin clarity it helps with fine lines and the aging process um, and it helps to you know allow the skin to have that youthful dewy glow that you talk about and um, so to find a plant-based alternative to retinol is wonderful so i love to touch upon that brand because they're really kind of pushing the boundaries yeah, absolutely. in terms of makeup um for instance if we look at some of the trends this year coming into sort of autumn winter 2020 dewy skin is definitely one of these trends and that kind of no makeup makeup look mm -hmm. is definitely really prevalent prevalent so actually not using too much foundation is going to really help so instead of using and layering on lots of foundation and lots of powder, actually um, think, thinking about kind of using products underneath your foundation. So things like, for instance, um, 
highlighters. So this is by Cover FX, which is a wonderful little brand. You can pick that up from um, Space NK. And I'll just show you on the back of my hand. You can just use a little splash of it and you can mix it in with a foundation just to give yourself, can you see oh, that? Oh, I love this glow. Yeah. Yes. So that on its own would be quite like bang, but you can see I've mixed it in with my CC cream here. So I mixed it in with a splash of right. this. Right. Just to, you know, increase that glow. And then I just worked it all over. Now you can concentrate in the areas of your face where you want to have that kind of that high sheen, but yes. to get that, that kind of that dewy finish, I like to mix it in. And um, I, I prefer um, for that dewy finish to use CC creams. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit lighter consistency, a bit dewier in the finish. Mm -hmm. um, you can also use lovely powders like Hourglass here, um, which I love. Um, does this kind of, um, it's a highlight palette. I think it's called um, Ambient Palette, which is beautiful. All of their power powders are really, really sheer and gorgeous. Right. So I think it's about layering your products and not being too heavy handed. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously if you need to have, or you prefer to have a fuller coverage, that's totally fine. Just make sure you're using powders um, to set your products that have a, like a luminosity about them for sure. Right. Can I ask you now, you're saying that um, you can put sort of obviously foundation and then um, put it on and, and maybe in layers, but how long should we actually keep the foundation on? Because a lot of the time um, when you start putting on the foundation in the morning, you know, you'll start noticing that it's your skin starts getting all dull. So how long do you recommend uh, for somebody who say myself would, would be should be wearing um, foundation? Okay, so for instance, if you're talking about a foundation, you should always, always prime first. If you're using a primer, it's like painting an old door, isn't it? You mm. need to prime the door first before painting it. So it's exactly the same with skin. A primer will even out your skin texture, but it will also allow the foundation to grab on and hold on for longer, giving you more longevity with that. So right. definitely make sure you're using a primer, followed by your foundation, and then setting your foundation with a powder, like a sheer lightweight powder, either loose or a pressed, and then maybe even a setting spray. So if you know that your skin is particularly oily and the makeup just gets eaten by, because some skin is very hungry, yes. it just eats the makeup away. Um, what you don't want to be doing is using a foundation and powder and then later on layering more foundation on, then layering more powder. Actually, what you're better off to, say for instance, if I had a presenter, because I've worked in TV for however many years, if I've got a presenter sitting on my chair and they've been on air for hours maybe it's um like a breaking news story and they're just going to be on for hours and hours they will be better off coming off if they've been on for hours and actually just giving their whole face a refresh so maybe keeping the eyes on but stripping the foundation all the way back to the skincare and just repeating that process rather than going back in and back in and just adding more liquid than powder liquid than powder very, very good advice there. That's brilliant, Sarah. Now, what makeup and brands do you now suggest for those that suffer from acne or redness? Like I, for example, have a lot of redness, tend to have like, you know, I mean, I, I put a bit of foundation on, but I have a lot of redness normally around my cheeks. So what would you recommend for those that first suffer from redness or acne or even dryness in their, in their um, sort of skin? Sure. And as we're coming into autumn, winter, all of these things are more prevalent. People are more rosy skinned and you know, we're coming into that dry season for sure. And that's where things like facial oils, just a drop of oil mixed in with your moisturizer can really help. Um, but again, before talking about products that we're going to layer on top of the skin, coming back to the gut, I really feel like a good gut health helps to improve skin health. So you really should be thinking about using like pre and probiotics or digestive enzymes to get the gut working in the right way to help increase the, the radiance in the skin. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're using products, um, you don't, the thing is, if you're using anything too heavy, what then happens is the skin can't breathe and it mm -hmm. can't repair itself. Right. So you just need to make sure that you're using products that are non comedogenic that are more botanical. Um, I love the Ordinary Foundations. I love them. They're a really great vegan brand. They do like a heavier weight foundation, but a lovely CC cream as well. Mm -hmm. I want to love as well. Um, so it really... Yeah, I, I truly believe that it starts from the, from the skincare and the nutrition. Right. Oh, I see. And then, yeah. But actually, um, if we're talking about trends for autumn, winter, we touched upon that kind of rosy complexion. Mm -hmm. That's actually fit. That's actually really in right now, actually. Yeah. So rosy <laughs> cheeks is good. So um, we don't want to kind of like blot away all of our natural colouring. Actually, rosy skin is really, really good right now. Yeah, yeah. Just that. Not dry, skin, not dry, flaky skin for sure. <laughs> but the <laughs> 
problem is that because of how red, you know, sort of it gets this area, especially, um, and then you get, say, for example, quite flustered, hot, it just gets yeah. even sort of redder, I think, I feel sometimes. Yeah. It explode, but I, I, it's not the case, but it just feels sometimes. A... I, I think definitely going in with like um, a concealer over yeah. the areas of redness, because right. you don't necessarily need to have like a fuller coverage over the whole face. It could right. just be areas of interest like you were talking about, but um, right. yeah. Okay. All right. So now, um, if I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking of, uh, uh, overhauling my makeup bag for the new season. Now what eyeshadow colors are trendy this fall and what lipstick is a must have for my fall look or for any ladies fall look? <laughs> okay. So like in terms of the trends that are popular, so we've spoken about skin, that kind of no makeup, makeup look, that dewy skin complexion. Yeah. What's really in right now in terms of eyeshadow right. is that kind of grungy oily kind of look which you know right. to some might sound completely disgusting but i absolutely adore it so um i'm going to show you for instance this palette here this is from tarte and all of the um packaging from tarte is lovely and actually chocolate. this one smells yeah. like chocolate it's gorgeous but can you see those tones they're kind of oily fairly yes, yes you know that yeah. so so those kind of tones and kind of like worked into the eye maybe like with your finger like really pressed into place also right. like hourglass to these lovely little pots as well mm -hmm. little pots of magic i call them but oh these kind God. of like these tones so some of them are very glittery some of them are oh. more more chic like this is very very in this season as well okay um so that's kind of grungy tone like i'm just trying to um look for mm. yeah like even if you want to go a bit like warmer as well oh. but these kind of tones are definitely yes. in right now also right. which was really popular um on the catwalks and and this can translate as you, if you i mean you can wear it bold as well of course but you can water this down it's still kind of those like really rosy colors and um, right. that rosy color on the eyes but almost like um pinks and oranges like work together it's like that kind of like um that blend between the two is for, for quite an eye popping look for sure yes, yes. That sounds um, yeah. What about, what about lipstick now? Uh, I love lipstick, as you can see. I love the red. Yeah, that looks gorgeous. So at this time of year, reds are always, always popular. Um, right. But I all, I all, my philosophy with makeup is always, you know, we talk about trends, but it's always if you wear something with confidence, that's what looks the best. Um, right. So it really is what suits you. So for instance, if I'm always going for that really, really kind of grungy eye, I might go like for like a, a nude lip, for example, you know, just to make the eye like the focal point. Yes. But also that kind of like, like red wine berry look is really, really in right now. So kind mm -hmm. of obviously going into like these plummy colors always come out this time of year, don't they? But like, yes. like for instance, you know, like these kind of yeah, shades. This, this is my, one of my favorite colors, yes. Yeah, and it, this is quite nice. It's a duo by Arbonne. So you have like a matte color and a gloss on one side. So right. if you want to freshen it up with a gloss, you can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but that's the kind of tone there. In fact, um, uh, Makeup for TV is, is a brand that was brought out by a, a wonderful lady called Joanna Morgan, who I know you know. She's been in the industry for 30 years. So it was originally like designed as a professional makeup kit, but she also produces um, wonderful products for consumers yes. as well. And, and she does the most wonderful palettes, which is great for all sorts of um, eye tones, lip tones, wonderful skin palettes as well. So yeah, worth a check out. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Honestly, today, Sarah, you have just overwhelmed me with so much information about all these products that I'm going to go now and buy them all because they sound amazing. Um, and obviously being a, a, a somebody that knows all of the trends, yes, we'll go for it. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for um, coming onto our show, uh, Into the Talk, and would love to see you again, hopefully. In no, no worries. Thank nice you. to meet you. Bye, nice Dina. Nice to meet you. Bye. NHS says about 95% of people aged between 11 and 30 are affected by acne to some extent. While it's rarely harmful, it can cause emotional distress and can scar the skin. Depending on its severity, you can choose prescription medication or over-the-counter medication to treat acne. But what about diet? Several studies suggest that following a healthy diet can prevent and treat acne. Foods rich in certain nutrients are linked to lower levels of acne. Whilst everyone's body is different, it might be beneficial experimenting with your diet and finding out what works for you. Our health expert is here to talk through skin-friendly food choices. with us 
our gorgeous chef, Daniela. How are you, Daniela? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. Good morning or good evening, wherever I'm finding everyone in the world. It's good to be here. <laughs> well, it's a good evening here from London. So it's nice to see you back on Insta Talk. Yes, um, Daniela, right. So we're talking about uh, looking after our skin um, and especially if someone has acne. So what food should we be eating to treat or prevent acne? This is really a hot topic. I think especially for teenagers and preteens, some of the most important groups of people that we want to worry about during this uncertain, unprecedented time. And so what I will advise people to do, especially youngsters, is to consume a diet that's really high in fruits and vegetables, but omega-3 fatty acids in particular, um, and also probiotic rich foods. Um, and I also want to just mention, in addition to food, also tea, like green tea, is wonderful for preventing acne. Um, okay. And then in, in, including in, in, in all of the foods that you eat, including the, the rainbow foods that we um, enjoy out of the fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, think mm -hmm. of the micro and the macronutrients that we also consume uh, on a varied diet. So you really really want to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin E as well as zinc and also uh, vitamin A and D. These are very important to preventing acne. Right. Okay. Are there any foods that um, we should avoid completely and we shouldn't actually include in our diet, um, especially if we are actually suffering from acne? Yeah, it's pretty simple to think about. So when we are thinking about acne in particular, it's literally an inflammation of the skin. And mm -hmm. the skin is the largest organ of the body. So when we can think about it like that, we want to literally avoid all inflammatory foods. Now, one of the easiest things to think about that's an inflammatory food that for many years was considered something we should avoid if we are trying to avoid or prevent acne are dairy products. But oh. not only are dairy products bad for the skin and bad for inflammation in the gut microbiome, which can cause acne, the other type of food group that we want to avoid or um, use in moderation is really foods that are high in a glycemic index or a glycemic load. Now, those are foods like breads, um, sweetened breakfast cereals, um, like cornflakes and puffed rice and bran flakes. Um, instant cereals are very high on the glycemic index. And then things like um, dried fruits and fruits that are very high in the glycemic index. Those are melons and pumpkins, um, even potatoes. Um, again, we wanna enjoy these foods in moderation. So you don't have to eliminate them completely, but just um, make sure that you're aware of how much you're getting and right. try to crowd out uh, the GI foods with all of the rainbow foods. Those are the fruits and the vegetables, the nuts and the seeds. Those are the foods that we tout often and we want to get a lot of those. Right. Okay. Sorry about the background. That was just the telephone going there. So right. apologies about that. Um, now, is it worth um, changing my diet before I seek over the counter or um, prescription treatments? Because obviously there are quite a few um, sort of treatments out there that you can sort of get over the counter. So um, what is it worth changing then the diet before we actually consider any of this? I say yes. My advice to people is I always try to recommend that you change your diet first, or if that's not possible, change the most natural or available options that you have first. And I say first because sometimes that's just the first line of defense and maybe it doesn't take you all the way to your goal, um, mm -hmm. but it is certainly going to help. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, namely a plant-based diet can really be very potent. And I always talk about the power of our plate and that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being able to see very intense and small, sometimes even large, um, significant or, um, you know, like even slight changes happen mm -hmm. really quickly when you're eating potent, colorful fruits and vegetables. So mm -hmm. good rule of thumb, if you can eat the rainbow, you will be better off in your gut microbiome and then in your skin and then in your overall well-being and health. Right. That's brilliant. That sounds really good. Now, how, how long will it take actually to see any results, you know, if we actually carry on with this diet um, and with the rainbow foods? 
Yeah, so it depends on the person, of course. Everyone has their own bio-individuality, and that's just a really um, big word or big phrase to think about. We're all different. Our mi microbiomes are different in our gut as well as our brains and our, all of our organs. For most people, it takes anywhere between, I would say, two days to up to 28 days to see some sort of a result from eating fruits and vegetables, colorful mm. foods, the rainbow foods, right? And so I really like to give a range really more specifically between 21 and 28 days. I say, if you're going to try something new related to your diet first, it takes about 21 days to establish a new uh, habit, which is great, but it probably will take you more like a full month to um, continue that habit, uh, make it really a part of your life and to feel comfortable with that. And now to start to see the results. So about a month. So it's actually um, all about changing your lifestyle. I think that's probably what it, um, it's all about. Um, now, acne normally causes um, a lot of emotional distress to those that suffer from it. What advice do you actually have for those suffering from acne? Yes, I think the best advice that I can offer here is that early treatment can prevent the emotional distress and the acne scarring. So what I'm talking about is understanding the cycle of the skin. And the cycle of the skin is much like the hormonal patterns that we all experience, especially us women, right? So if we can understand that if we have acne, know that in a certain matter of weeks, we are probably going to see an inflammation. And if I can treat that early, and that's both my emotional well-being, as well as my physical washing, eating fruits and vegetables, enjoying a plant-based diet, and do all of those, those are the preventative measures that are going to help me sort of early treat what I know is going to happen. Um, and I can um, expect that I'm going to feel safe, I'm going to feel taken care of. And most importantly, I know that I've given myself a lot of self-love before I have another inflammation bout. Fantastic. So it is all about self-love at the end, isn't it? <laughs> always self-love. I wore this little shirt with my little hearts on it because it's always about love. It's really, it comes down to that. The, the love is the root of everything. And I know yeah. how that sounds. It's simple, but it actually is true. That's fantastic. And with lots of love from London to where you are at the moment, Daniela, thank you ever so much for being thank with us so today. Much. Have a lovely day. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boots and sneakers are timeless classic autumn footwear choices. As fashion adapts for the cooler days, our footwear choices become a little more limited. From the classic Chelsea boot and skinny jeans combination to sneakers and wide leg pants, we're looking at how to wear boots and sneakers during the fall and add a fresh twist for the end of 2020. gorgeous Rana Zone from her wardrobe. Hello Rana, how are you? <laughs> Hi Dina, Hi. yes I'm from my wardrobe again. Most again. Of you like my wardrobe and uh, we're requesting to come back to my wardrobe. I love so your wardrobe. I'm back. And I told you this, I told you all the viewers were saying why isn't Rana out, uh, you know why is she not inside her wardrobe? The best place to be obviously. <laughs> no, I'm back, I'm back. I think Thank each you. one of us uh, had to feel her wardrobe, you know, because uh, it's uh, Rani, it's like your car, your own That's car. Right. True, and true. Uh, like if you're going to a trip, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's a fun, it's fun when you want to get is. ready. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I told you this is for me, the, your wardrobe is like heaven, you know, I, I'm, I'm aiming to get mine similar to yours very, very soon. <laughs> ah, inshallah, get it, get it from Ikea. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. right. Okay, so um, as you know, we are getting nearer to the time to get the boots out of the wardrobe uh, because the winter or the autumn season is coming upon us. Now, what am I getting out? Shall I get my ankle boots or the knee-high boots for 2020? What is the trend at the moment? You know, it's uh, fun to play around um, with boots uh, because they don't change from year to year. Right. So let's say if... Um, Ha one boat like uh, the last year like let's say Chelsea boots right. so this year it's gonna be you know on trend again mm -hmm. so I think um, 2020 is giving us uh, you know at like a small change you know to a new things mm -hmm. 
So uh, I'm going to talk about the very uh, trendy this year uh, is the, uh, the, the square boots. Right. You okay. See? And huh? yeah, we, the square boots, it's like last year or two years before we saw the pointed more. Mm. So this year we can see the square boots. Right. We can, right. uh, you know, with a cowboy and Western boots, mm. uh, we can see it. Uh, on um, uh, Bottega Vente, uh, some uh, big brands, and we can see uh, some boots on Zara now. Right. Uh, getting, you know, giving the like, uh, you know, the, the, the a very, like a comfortable uh, boots, the yes. same shape. Right. Okay. And as we see also uh, the cowboy boots. With a little retro. These are nice. Yes. Yes. Like yes. 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 And 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 also we can see like uh, you know the block colors mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. it like right. uh, the skin this the this uh, the snake uh, skin. Yes. Again mm -hmm. is trending, mm -hmm. and uh, we can like the very famous uh, boot trend for fall winter twenty twenty is. Uh, boots getting higher and higher, like ah, you know, the heels. knee. Yeah, no, <laughs> oh, no not the only heels. Oh, not the, not the, the heels. Knee, oh, the, the leg. The I leg. See. Yes. So it's we can see over the knee. Yes. But also different with like you know the leg is more wider. Right. Not right. not not fitting. Right. Too fitting. Okay. It's right. a wide leg, you know. And right. also, as we see, like a chunky, you know, chunky look, mm -hmm. and the square. The square and the chunky look, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, would, and, you would say, uh -huh, you would say then, um, for this year, for 2020 autumn uh, winter look, it's more the uh, knee high, not the ankle then, or can we actually swap between them? No, there is the both. Yeah. As I okay. show you, the ankle boots is I like see, you know. Right boots and booties i see you know I see, yes. yeah so it's ankle boots uh -huh. and as we you know with with the trousers uh this is like an ankle boot and you have the very long boots yeah yeah you know okay. yes. and we 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 we, uh, we can play with our uh you know uh uh with socks you know socks mm. are very uh, trendy in, in, in winter, so mm. we can go also, you know, these toxins can go also with sandals. Nice. This yeah, is this is like, oh. yeah, so I think <laughs> that so we can yeah. play with colors of toxins. Mm. Wow, you these know, are bright. To, to, I don't see yes. myself wearing that bright socks. <laughs> I <laughs> can see. Yeah. But I'm sure yeah. you can, you love your colors, yes. <laughs> yes, I love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, now, and yeah. All, yeah. Tell me, and also, yeah, you know, there are also the widges boots. Oh wow, these are my yes. favorite. <laughs> yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> widges like a, yeah. you know to to walk on boots. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like the western boots, and this widges boots we can. Uh, we saw uh, J Lo Jennifer Lopez with the Coach uh, brand with the long yeah. knee uh, widges boots. Mm -hmm. uh, they they call them turbo boots. Right. Why are they called that? Yeah. Why are they called terrible? Boots? Uh, I think uh, they had like 1941 uh -huh. turbo boots because it's like, you know, you're wearing turbo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so turbo, turbo. I see. Turbo. Turbo. Yes. Yeah. They're quite, yeah. quite big and chunky. Chunky, big. big yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And of course, we will not forget about the Chelsea or like, uh, you know, also, you know, the riding boots, the normal yeah. horse riding boots. Yeah, uh, this also uh, trendy with the uh, low heels or high heels, and uh, the uh, what do you say military boots military. with the lace, the, the lace boots. These were very boots. fashionable. The military boots, yeah. or normally the boots with the laces, they were very very fashionable. I think it was spring, yeah. time, spring around springish, beginning of summer. And back again, yeah, and from last again. year. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you know, it's like I'm giving two ideas: lace boots, mm. either with, uh, you know, uh, military boots or yeah. normal boots. Right. But the lace is on back, and uh, I'm gonna give like a, a tip that you know, don't be afraid that if you have um, a, a big size of uh, 
uh, food that this will give you, you know, to have a more... It's bigger, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. No, because the lace actually makes it uh, thinner. Looks ah, uh, I see. thinner. That's yes. A point. I see. Yes. Where can we yes. buy all of these uh, boots? Uh, uh, you know, um, these ones you can... I, I saw some on Asus, Bershika, uh, Zara, H&M. Uh, H&M, you know, they had like a collaboration with... Uh, the Lebanese uh, designer Sandra, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, they had a special uh, uh, like uh, boots. Uh, it's the same military boot, right. and it was like a donation for uh, Beirut. Ah, so they had a, a yeah a yeah. small collection, okay. right. and it was okay. nice. Yeah, it was. Uh, she had like a, she did a skirt, mm -hmm. lace skirt mm -hmm. with these boots. And it oh, looks beautiful. Very yeah. Very, uh, yeah. This was something that is really fashion conscious and loves to wear trendy clothes and, and uh, obviously the shoes match match the boots with the with the clothes. So somebody that's really, really confident to go out there with, <laughs> with Yes, the yes, you know, yeah, now we can see, you know, like uh, Chanel, uh, big brands like evening, yeah. if you are wearing like a very uh, what they say, um, you know, um, a, a suit. Yes. Or a skirt, and yeah. you can have. Uh, well, you that can was the, that was what I was going to ask you actually. And um, boots and skinny jeans. Um, I, I personally think uh, matching boots and skinny jeans are a perfect combination. But can I bring in like dresses and tights uh, into the mix? Like, can I sort of wear a dress with tights on and then put boots on? Like whether it's military boots or maybe um, really big you know, chunky boots, because I will, if I wanted to wear boots on, on, on um, my dresses, it would have to be really nice with a high heel and simple. And so I don't know, you know, if you want to. No, no, no. You boots, can see yeah. now. Yes. No, no. There is a lot of dresses mm. and skirts are, are with boots, with the chunky boots, right. with uh, uh, like um, cowboy boots, Western boots, uh, maxi dresses, short dresses, skirts with a long, um, uh, knee boots and uh, like the white also white boots oh uh, it's very um, yeah you know with the yes yeah, white boots are also in where can i get boots like this for example they look very uh, like funny. yes also also it was uh, i saw an aces and oh. this is actually actually this is um uh sam edelman and uh, like there is a uh, jeffrey campbell they have they have, have it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if I now, search for it online, yeah, I'll yeah, find it. You know, there's in Zara, the, 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 um, uh, the square boots, it's like similar, very similar the, to Potega boots, white, and it's like sold out the minute they. Oh, released. the minute it was yeah. online, I see. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, but so it's we coming need to, back yeah. again. It will come back. Okay, well, um, we yeah. have to look up then, keep looking on Zara online then and find, try and find it. Now, I just wanted to move on now to, um, you know, sort of uh, walking around comfortably. And as we know, autumn is all about comfort. What sneakers yeah. are in um, this fall and what can I team them up with? So if I wanted to wear sneakers, what, what should I wear them with? Now, listen, I don't want to uh, forget about something, but because also it's a very comfy and a lot of us, especially in London or Europe on a cold countries, yes. it's like a must have piece and this will never yani, die, you know, right. it's, it's, uh, you know, the Uggs. Oh, yes. <laughs> These are the most comfortable boots you could ever wear. Yes, yes. that's right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the Uggs are always there. Yes. Uh, and um, as you said, it's a warmy and uh, sneakers, uh, we're going to say, um, you know, sneakers, this uh, also uh, now uh, chunky, retro, let's say um, the, yeah. the, yeah, the soul are more higher, you know, uh, w with the colors. This also will, will never die. Like, mm -hmm. and it's becoming so trendy. Uh, yeah. We can see a lot of them, uh, like, see, like more colors. We can see Nike, mm -hmm. we can see Reebok, mm -hmm. Adidas with Yeezy. Yes. Uh, sneakers, there's a lot of, like, this one, like uh, Stella McCartney, you see like oh, black uh, yeah, and nice. yeah, silver, like a uh, block colors. Yeah. yeah. And uh, very comfortable. And also I want to say that 
whenever you have like a big legs, like from down, uh, oh, right, okay, so you've got chunky, chunky, so, uh, sort of, yeah, legs, uh -huh. yeah, you know, with the big sneakers, it's may it makes them look smaller. Ah, I see what you mean. Yes, I noticed also that it's it's been very trendy to wear these sneakers with dresses now. So even like yes. a nice flowy dress, and then you just put a pair of sneakers on, whether it's Converse yes. or like you said, you know, these big names and big brands. Yes, yes. And uh, as uh, I will show you, I had this before, uh, like, uh, you know, oh, an old uh, Adidas. Yes. yes. The widges one. Oh yes, I've yeah. seen these with the Prada. Also very, very Prada. fancy, and we yeah. can see the neck. Yes, you Prada. Know, I you have can a pair like that. We can see by. Yeah, 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 yeah. The you know sneakers like the neck is high. Yes, you can see. Uh, yes, and like uh, the you know Jordan Air. It's oh, also it's very, very. Yes. Yeah, this is my yes. daughter's. Uh, just arrived. Yeah. <laughs> and she's so happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless yeah. her. These yeah. are lovely. These are very nice. And they look very comfortable. Yeah. But I really like the ones that have got the built-in wedge, you know, with the sneakers. Uh, I really like them. Yeah. yeah. You see, this one, we can see, um, you know, R13, they are yes. having the wedges uh, sneakers. Yes. They've become, uh, yeah. That's with right. a neck. Yes. With yes. a big yeah, yes. sole. Yeah. With very a big sole, yeah. That's and in nice. summer, I had these you know, ah, color the, socks. The, the, yeah. the socks inside. Yeah, yes. The, yes. You see? But I now love we that. can I see mm. more uh, chunky mm. and uh, the big, you know, big sole. Yes. So I think uh, sneakers uh, will never, yeah, never, never die. Get, get, and I've noticed, no, that, no. and I've noticed that the big brands like Gucci, the minute Gucci brought in the sneakers, yes. the famous sneakers, yes. everybody started to follow, and all the brands now have got their own sneakers now. So and it's all obviously ranging in different prices, you know, so you can afford yeah. to keep, keep and uh, obviously so that you don't have to pay for the expensive. No, and uh, you can see some of them had like some stones. On oh, them, yes, like right. uh, yeah, uh, yeah. metallic and uh, like uh, you know, uh, the shiny, yeah, metal. yeah. Th this is very uh, on even and boots. I want to just tell you something, yes. Um, uh, we know the rainy boots, oh, okay? yes, the rain boots, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, the rain boots. And um, I got these from Juicy Couture maybe four or five years, you know, and um. We, I, I saw the same design, but more chunky. They called it the clown boots. Ah, that's because they're quite and, big. Yes. Yes, on the <laughs> runway of Bottega. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, also, Zara uh, uh, put, like, um, like released, uh, like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, slippers, but also chunky with the rubber, you know. But it was, like, called in Bottega the clown boots. This, very one, nice. this is very, very trendy with, you know, uh, colored, flashy yellow and green. Uh, yeah. it, it's too uh, trendy now this winter. And, you know, like something, and they wear it with uh, sequin dresses. Oh, wow. Dress, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a statement, you know. Yes. Statement boots also are on this winter. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Rana, for um, showing us your amazing uh, collection of boots and sneakers. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> That's it. I'm coming. I'm coming to Dubai to check out the boots. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure know, there's the, things hidden in there. I, 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 I'm very well known and loving boots, and I wear boots summer and winter. And winter because you, can, you can wear uh, boots in, in summer, you know, like ah. I had I had these on sale, oh, uh, Max wow. Mara. That's you know, this beautiful. is canvas. canvas beautiful. Is always, this is my yeah. style. This is my style. Yes, right? I, know, I, like I know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank so, you yeah. so much, Rena. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week for more trending, trendy tips, uh, you know, and, and latest fashion uh, tips. Thank you so much. Yes, Have a good yes. weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.
brings us to the end of this week's show. I would like to thank all our guests for coming on to InstaTalk. We will be back next week with all the latest trending stories from our fashion stylists, influencers, and lifestyle experts. If you want to watch our weekly episodes of InstaTalk, then follow us online at WTX News on Facebook and Instagram, or visit our website, www.wtxnews.com, or subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can like, share, and comment. So that's it from us. I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.